Church and state keep them separate. Quote, Swarms of Christian hornets are going to sweep across the United States, clearing the way for citizens to alter the First Amendment and establish a Christian government, according to Ted Pantello, director of the Freedom Council, a newly organized group backed by Pat Robertson's powerful Christian broadcasting network. End quote. Church and State, May 1982. Grassroots Political Movement. Quote, in an April 7 state organizing meeting at the Bethel Baptist Church in Ellicott City, Maryland, Pantello said that Freedom Council plans to select good Christian men and women in each congregational district in the country to set up a grassroots political network which can turn this country back to Jesus. With a membership limited exclusively to born-again Christians, Pantello said his group plans to monitor and lobby the state legislatures and Congress, and, in the future, elect officials who will advance religious freedom and Christianity. The Freedom Council and its mentor Robertson claim federal judges are unelected tyrants who have overturned the country's Christian heritage. The group means to reserve that trend by getting born-again Christians to promote their cause through the political and educational process. Their goals opposing anything that is against God, Christianity, or freedom. Pantello believes that the key to achieving evangelical Christian political goals is to go back and take the land little by little, a tactic he drew from a passage in the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 23, verses 28 to 30. Other religious right organizations, he said, have emphasized large centralized staffs supported by direct mail fundraising programs with no grassroots organization. In an indirect criticism of Jerry Falwell's moral majority, he said such groups have no widespread popular support with which to pressure elected officials. The Freedom Council will be built from the grassroots, he said. Then you can have a Christian president and a Christian government. Pantello described the council framework as including state coordinators, congressional district coordinators, and capital city coordinators who will monitor state legislative activity and report to council headquarters. Fifteen pastors are risking their church's tax-exempt status to be state contacts, he said. Eventually, the council plans to extend its organization to the precinct level. Hornets to drive freedom from America Quoting from the book of Exodus, Pantello said God sent hornets before the wandering tribes of Israel to drive out the people residing in the promised land so the Israelites could take it. He said the Freedom Council and other similar groups will be the hornets of the United States, preparing the way for a Christian political triumph. Pantello claimed his group is already organized in 42 states. Separation of Church and State a Myth the participation and support of Robertson may be the key factor in the success or failure of the Freedom Council. His 700 Club, a Christian talk show, is broadcast on an estimated 159 television affiliates, 2,700 cable outlets, and the network's own four stations, and it claims an audience of several million. In October of last year, the show featured a week-long series called Seven Days Ablaze, opposing the concept of church and state separation. He charged that the wall of separation between church and state is a myth, promoted in recent years by the communist-influenced American Civil Liberties Union to bring the United States into line with the Constitution not of the U.S., but of the USSR. Robertson recommended that Christians join grassroots freedom groups like the Freedom Council to change national policy. A half-hour film presentation called The Dividing Line was shown at Pantello's organizing meeting in Maryland. It consisted of film clips from the week-long television series. Another speaker on the film was Professor Charles Rice of Notre Dame University, who said the nation is in the midst of warfare between the view that God's will is paramount and the view that the state is God. Constitutional Convention Proposed Constitution Be Rewritten Following the film, 
Pantelo said Rice was considered by many to be the next Supreme Court judge and added that Rice is working with Pantelo's group to draft an amendment to the U.S. Constitution to further their common goals. While Pantelo did not specify the contents of the amendment, Robertson, on the 700 Club series, suggested an amendment over and above the First Amendment to guarantee Christian religious liberty. Pantelo has already appeared before the Missouri legislature advocating a resolution calling for a national constitutional convention to add a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. Experts believe such a convention could not be limited to one subject and could rewrite the whole Constitution, including the Bill of Rights. 700 Club favorite suggests Pope be world ruler. Ironically, Rice, who has found favor with the evangelical Christian political movement, is a devout Catholic with decidedly non-Protestant views on the role of the papacy. In his book, Beyond Abortion, The Theory and Practice of the Secular State, Rice wrote that there must be someone outside the government and the people to whom it can look for morally binding interpretations of the natural law. Since the natural law is the law of God, and since Christ is God, it would be appropriate for the superlegal arbiter to be the vicar of Christ on earth, i.e. the Pope. Brackets theirs. Robertson re-enters Christian political arena. The Virginia evangelist made a much-publicized exit from the religious right in October of 1980, resigning his membership in the Round Table, an organization of evangelical conservatives. He expressed his personal belief that the Lord is to change society through spiritual rather than political means, and worried that confusion about his political role might endanger his spiritual mission. With his interest in politics renewed, Robertson chose Pantello, who attended Loyola University, to head his political wing. Pantello gained experience in national organizing through coordinating the non-political Washington for Jesus in 1980, an event which brought 500,000 conservative and evangelical Christians to the nation's capital to pray for the country. He said the successful rally was the turning point in the visibility and influence of Christians in public affairs. End quote. Church and State, May 1982. Fading Freedoms? Quote, we face a new political regime in this country, a new cluster of political moods with religious overtones. Some think that we are now hovering on the brink of fascism. End quote. Christian Century, July 29, 1981. Quote, Relations between church and state in America are slipping into disarray and conflict as never before. In the view of clergymen and politicians, the wall of separation that Thomas Jefferson hoped would protect religion and government from each other and assure freedom to diverse faiths is losing credibility even as a hope, end quote. U.S. News and World Report, December 7, 1981. Quote, Today there isn't a single constitutional right that is safe. We've got to recognize that this is a massive assault, and it's now becoming easier to see this as the various pieces of anti-civil liberties program, which some people call the new right crop in the political arena, said American Civil Liberties Union Legislative Director John Shattuck. End quote. Civil Liberties, December 1981. Quote. Southwestern Baptist Seminary Professor Leon Macbeth said a new and unprecedented movement by conservative churchmen, many a part of the new Christian right, is joining the hue and cry to limit, adjust, or redefine the nature and basis of religious liberty. Most of these people call themselves conservatives. I challenge that designation. They are not conservatives, but radical innovators who have departed from the teachings and practices of our Baptist forefathers. End quote. Church and State, December 1981. Quote, Senator Jesse Helms supposedly remarked to liberal Senator Lowell Weaker that we better be ready to make some changes in our liberal legislation. 
because it was very clear from the list of laws handed down from Mount Sinai what was expected of us. There it is, a hierarchical, controlling, threatening, distant, either-or, clear-cut, win-lose, succeed-fail, imposed religious mentality." End quote. Network, January-February 1982. Quote, a growing backlash against religious conservatives is driving the nation toward a confrontation over a separation of church and state. End quote. James Mann, U.S. News and World Report. Quote, America is currently besieged by an army of religious zealots who see the government and the ballot box as instruments for enforcing church dogma. If the trend continues, we'll have government-enforced religion and the end of a 200-year-old democracy. It's time church and state were separate once again. End quote. Time. Speaking of the separation of church and state, editor Presnell Wood of the Baptist Standard declared, quote, We must never tire of attempting to put them and keep them in the right perspective. End quote. Editorial, October 3, 1979. In response to this editorial, a letter to the editor stated, quote, Amen to the editorial. I am strongly in favor of religious freedom for everyone, but my heart quavered as I thought of Catholic traditions and beliefs. Are we on the threshold of ushering in another Dark Ages in our history of Christianity? End quote. October 31, 1979. Universal Publishing, Route 7, Box 471B, Waco, Texas, 76705, May 1982.